Rhyme Bill is now online. Hey guys and girls, today I'm going to show you how to store and use array data in your local storage. Let's go. All right, so I already went ahead and created all the HTML and CSS in quotes part of this. As you can see, I have a simple header, it's a H1. And below this, I have an input box. And beside our input box, I got some two buttons, which is save and view. All right, so as you can see, I got all my HTML stuff all set up. I got my header, I got my input, and I got my two buttons. Awesome. So now in our save function, we're gonna try and validate our data. So we're gonna say if local storage dot get item, and then in this item, we have to put in a key name. A key name could be whatever you can call it, dog, house, pet, whatever. I'm just gonna call it data, just to keep it simple for now. And we're gonna check if this key name data in our local storage is null. And if it's null, we simply wanna make it not null. <laughs> Okay, so this is just an aside for the people who have a different scenario going. So let's say you already have a fixed array that you just wanna to save to the local storage. You can simply just say local storage.set and then type in your array in that box, done. Great, so now how do we get new data to add to our local storage? Well, we create a variable and call it new data and set it to our input value, done. And just make sure that your input box has an ID and this should work. Also, it's always good practice to add comments to your code because when you're looking back on it, you at least want to know what you were thinking at the moment. <laughs> This is perfect, we're almost done. So now all we have to do is to get our old data and slap it on to the new data. To do this, we simply say var old data is equal to local storage dot get data. And the one thing you need to make sure of is when you're getting this data, it's never the way you want it. It's always in the string format. So it's like reading text. To make sure that the data is readable, you want to say json.parse and then in brackets you put your local storage stuff in there and that way it just works perfectly fine. Great! So once we have that, we simply say old data dot push new data. Perfect! So now that we've added on our new data, all we got to do is to save everything. So we say local storage dot set item data and then we set our old data I remember this old data pushed the new data into itself and the last thing we want to make sure of we want to say json.stringify and we want to stringify our old data because that's just how it goes that's so it just works awesome so let's go ahead and save everything go back to our web page refresh and now hit Control shift i this is going to open up inspect element most people are normally on elements or console but this is how to get to application. So once you're an application, you're gonna see a bunch of useless stuff on the side. The most important thing is local storage. Once you click on that, you'll be able to see all the data that's on the website or your file. All right, so let's go ahead and type in football or whatever sport you prefer. Or if you don't prefer sports and just wanna put in Mark Zuckerberg or Alien, whatever you guys want, just hit save. And now you can see it appears in your local storage. And as we were talking about, you see your key name is data and you see your data appears under key. And we can see our data contains an array football. Now go ahead and type in more stuff and hit save and you see it, it adds it to the array we have, which is perfect. All right, I should also add when you refresh your page, the local storage never gets cleared. So this is perfect for making sure your data never gets lost. <laughs> All right, so let's go ahead and move on to viewing our data, the most important piece. 
In order to view our data, we're first going to perform a check, making sure we have data to view. So we're going to say if our local storage dot get item data is not equal to null. So if there is data in our local storage, then go ahead and continue. Perfect. So we're done with that. Now we just got to display it in a div or a text. I'm just going to use the header we had existing before, and we're going to copy the ID, which is output. And I'm just going to use it to display our data. Now we're going to set the inner HTML is equal to json.parse local storage dot blah, blah, blah. All right, there we go. So now if we go back and refresh and now we hit view, you see it's displaying our data. Handball, croc, crocket. <laughs> that's supposed to be cricket. All right, that's. <laughs> All right, but it is important to note that our text isn't spaced out. It doesn't look nice. There are a couple tricks to get away with this, but I'm just gonna stick to the simplest one. And our new data, our variable new data, we're just gonna add a space string in front of our input. That way there's always a space before the text. All right, so now if we go ahead and clear all this data and just start again from the top, you should see it will look better. And that's it guys. That's how to store and view array data in local storage. It's pretty cool, pretty simple. Used it lots of times on websites I've made and it's just way better when you have it on video and you're not trying to think of how to do it yourself. You're welcome, guys. You're welcome. Last but not least, we hit a thousand subscribers, guys. I don't even know what to say. I'm just going to ignore the sheet I have in front of me, which tells me exactly what to say. But anyway, I have no idea what to say. But thank you guys so much. I really appreciate it. And to the 20 of you guys who actually watch my videos, thank you guys. You guys are fantastic. You guys are the best. I only get about 20 views on my videos, so 20 of you guys are really putting in that work. And to Max Programming. Max Programming is just a YouTube channel like I am. He's also great. And this guy is literally the best. He's one of the best. He should have a thousand subscribers right now. So I'm going to shout out his channel in the description below. And lastly, I want to talk about the comments and emails, which are questions on videos I've made, talking about errors and stuff like that. I literally haven't responded to any of them. So don't feel bad if you don't have a response. This is because I've been so busy. So I created a Patreon page where you guys can ask me questions when you sign up and I'll definitely respond to you. That way it's fair and I'm not responding to some and leaving others out. Hopefully you guys understand and I hope you guys have a great day and until next time, rhyme below.